Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of EV Unite. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to mount and install the NLX Juice Box Home EV Charger that I've got right here in my hands. I'm gonna be installing it on this wood panel that's right in between the two garage bays. Now this is part of a video series. In the first video, I did an unboxing where I showed you the packaging and everything that's in the box. And then in the next video, I'm gonna be doing a review and a demonstration where I charge a Tesla Model Y using this charger. If you're interested in electric vehicles, charging, Tesla, or alternative energy, all the above, please consider subscribing to this channel to get notification of future videos. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below. And without further ado, let's get started. So one thing that I did want to note is that this product comes in both a 32 amp or a 40 amp configuration. So the one we have here is 32 amps and we opted to get the plug. You can also get a hard wire configuration. So that would basically depend on your house's electrical setup and your preference. But as you can see here, this is the NEMA 14-50 plug and that's what we're going to be using. Depending on how experienced you are with electrical work, you may choose to run and install the wire yourself. Um, but if it's something that you're not comfortable with, I would definitely recommend hiring an electrician for this step. Now, before we mount anything or plug anything in, we want to make sure at the panel that we've shut the breaker off for that circuit. That's just going to ensure that we don't have any live power and that we're safe during installation. One question you might be having is where is the best location to mount the charger? I actually have an entire video specifically talking about this and I'll link that in the description below so to make sure to check that out. Um, but the general rule of thumb is you're gonna want the charger mounted at shoulder height. What I found is anywhere between 40 to 50 inches typically what works well. And it's important to make sure that the outlet is close to where the charger is gonna go. So in this case, the cord is only two feet long. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have a short enough distance so that you can actually reach and plug in to the outlet. So now that the power's turned off to the breaker, um, the first thing we're gonna do is mount this backing plate. So included in the box is the hardware. So let's take a look at that. So all the screws, um, there's basically two screws that are gonna mount the bracket onto the wall. And then there's two other screws that mount directly onto the charger. For this step, um, it's definitely good to use a level just to make sure that the product gets mounted nice and straight um, and not at some strange angle. So let's go ahead and do that step now. So here I'm just marking on the wall and the holes that we're uh, mounting to are right at the top and at the bottom. So I'm gonna put one right in the middle in both cases. And here we're gonna be using a power drill. So now this plate is mounted nice and securely to the wall. Give it a nice tug. Make sure you're not stripping um, the wood or anything behind here. And now we'll get ready to do the next step. So right before I mount it, I do want to point one thing out. So if you look on the side here, um, the product comes with a set of keys and there's a lock right here. So, oh, upside down. Okay, so essentially what this lock does is when you lock it, this little metal bar is gonna come out and latch onto the plate. So that's gonna prevent people from being able to um, pull the unit off the wall after you've installed it. So that's just one thing I wanna show you, Walt, before I mount it so you can see the back of the unit here. Now the next step, you're gonna take um, these small screws that come with the product, and you can see here and here, there's threaded inserts um, and you're just gonna take the screws and tighten them down into the threaded inserts. 
in the instructions, they recommend that you tighten this down so that you only have about two millimeters sticking out. So you can eyeball this um, after you actually put it on the wall. If it's a little loose, you can tighten this down a little further if, if necessary. So I'm just gonna eyeball it for now to roughly two millimeters on both. I wouldn't recommend using a power drill for this step only because there's a possibility that you could strip the threaded inserts in the plastic. Um, so it's just safer to use a hand driver for this step. Okay, so that looks like about two millimeters to me here. The next step is gonna be to mount it um, onto the wall using those two screws and the hooks that are in the mounting bracket. Just like that, slides right down. Now, you definitely wanna check and make sure that it seems secure, that it's not rocking any way, it's not pulling off the wall, um, and that it doesn't seem loose. So, in this case, it feels nice and secure. Okay, and now um, it has that additional safety feature that's locking it even more secure um, from someone being able to slide it up and pull it off of the wall. Now, once again, um, the, the power is shut off to this breaker, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is plug in the plug into the wall. There you go. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you push it all the way in and that it's nice and firm. And the nice feature of this product is that it actually um, has this plastic rim here that allows you to coil the cable around. And here's the charging cable. So I haven't shown this too much yet, um, but this is the charging cable. This is a J1772 um, charging cable. So as I previously mentioned, you can use this to charge a Tesla. Um, all Teslas come with an adapter that's J1772 to Tesla. So that's something that you would just, you just plug onto here and then you could plug directly into a Tesla. Um, one of the nice features of this product is that there's a location where you could plug right in here. And just like that, it kind of holds the handle in place. Um, and there's a button on top if you want to release and then charge the car. So as you can see, overall, the installation is very easy for this product. You just have four screws, two that mount the support bracket onto the wall, and then two screws that go into the unit that act as a hook so you can slide it and mount it into position. You also have the set of keys that allow you to securely lock the product onto the wall by turning the key. And you have this feature where you can wrap the cable around and then store the handle. After you've um, mounted everything and plugged in the unit, of course, the final step would be to turn the breaker back on so that you can deliver power to the unit. So let's go ahead and do that now. When you power up the unit, the front panel will display a series of different colored LED bars. The orange color indicates that the unit is powering on. The magenta color is just telling you that the unit is offline and not connected to Wi-Fi. And finally, the LED bar will change to a pulsing blue color to let you know that the charger is in setup mode and ready to connect to your mobile device. So now let's take a look at the mobile app so we can finish the setup and get the charger connected to Wi-Fi. After downloading the app, you'll be greeted with a welcome screen and can click start to begin the setup. Next click connect now and then you'll have the option to either allow or not allow the app to access your location. Click next and navigate to your phone's Wi-Fi and connect to JuiceNet. Then go back to the NLX app and the charger will search for nearby Wi-Fi connections. Once your Wi-Fi pops up, select it and enter your password and click connect JuiceNet device to Wi-Fi. The charger will verify access and then present you with a large purple check mark to let you know that the connection is complete. Click next and now you'll see the app's home screen. Next, swipe left 
and then click Add Vehicle Information to tell the charger what type of car you'll be charging. You can assign a name to your vehicle and input information such as your car's VIN, battery capacity, efficiency, max driving range, charging rate, and the number of phases, and then click Save Vehicle. At the bottom of the screen, there's a tab to read EV-related news, and if your utility company offers incentives, then you can see those rewards in the last tab. Swiping left, you can see the current status of your charge, and swiping left once more, you can see a history of all of your charges. The home page should now say standby, and you're ready to plug in and charge. All right, guys, so that's it. We're officially installed, and we're connected to the mobile app through the Wi-Fi. The installation is pretty simple, as you can see, um, and in the next video, I'm gonna be showing you an actual demonstration where we charge a Tesla Model Y using this charger and then I'm gonna give you a personal review of some things that I like and what I don't like about the product. So if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you found any value in this video, give the video a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video.